Hello, evening all. Uh, can everyone hear me? We can. Jefferson, how are you going? Doing well on yourself. Excellent. Uh, we haven't actually met, have we? So um, it's going to be interesting <laughs> experience for, every, for everyone. <laughs> oh, boy. Uh, welcome, and thank you so much for joining us. Um, would you like to tell everyone listening what time it is where you are? Uh, yeah, it is currently 3 a.m. So. <laughs> yes. Yeah, Wow, wow. Okay, excellent. So I've either had a really, really late, late night or a really early morning, one of the two. So look, thank you so much for joining us on this. There's a heap of interest in this, uh, in your conversion, I think for two reasons. First of all, because it's an MG and we all love MGs. And also, from what I understand, you do not on a reasonably tight budget as well. So we're all eager to hear how that went as well, obviously, too. Um, so I'll just go through for those that haven't joined us previously and those that have, but may have forgotten how we do things that, that do these things. First of all, um, we'll do a bit of introduction. So we've got obviously myself, Russ Shepard from Evolution Australia and EV Up actually. So we do EV charging infrastructure, conversions and servicing. Uh, and for those who don't think electric cars need servicing, um, you should have come around, our, should come around our shop once in a while and see what we've got coming through. Uh, that actually do need maintenance. Uh, and also we've got obviously Jefferson Black, uh, who is uh, joining us from Colorado Springs, I believe, is that right? Yeah, that's right. Excellent. Colorado Springs, Colorado. Excellent. Uh, and uh, he's gonna talk us through his MG midget con conversion. Uh, uh, so just a bit of housekeeping before we get into it. Um, obviously only Jefferson and I can talk at the moment. Everyone else is muted because obviously uh, having everyone else been able to talk at the same time would be absolute chaos. Uh, that said, uh, there is a chat button so you can all talk amongst yourselves and um, uh, which we encourage you to do. Uh, so if you're not familiar with Zoom, there's a kind of a little green and red um, toolbar. If you hover over it, there's and then um, there should be a chat option there. Um, it's typically more, I think, from memory, so you can chat amongst yourselves and um, uh, as, as you so wish. But more importantly, there's actually a and a session there. So there's actually a and a in there as well. So you can go in there and add a question um, and we'll uh, answer as we, as we go through. Uh, what I may do is obviously ask Jefferson those questions if it's pertinent as we go through. Um, but otherwise, we'll obviously look to answer those questions at the end of the session, and we'll get in get into it from there. Um, just, I, I guess, for everyone, um, for everyone's benefit, I'll suggest that uh, you uh, take it as read that we're going to answer the questions like how much, how long, uh, all those kind of stuff, all that kind of all those, all those kind of questions, obvious stuff. So, um, but by all means. Anything else you want to answer, pop it in there, and, and we'll we'll, um, we'll answer those as, as we go through. Uh, so yeah, hopefully that all makes sense to everyone. Um, and there's been a heap of interest in this for sure. I mean, certainly from my point of view, because I used to used to actually own an MG Midget a long time ago and an MGB. So yeah, very interested in this stuff. Um, cool. All right, Jefferson, take it away. First slide, all yours. All right, great. So um, actually uh. I started building this car. Um, well, I guess the excuse is for my wedding, which is oh, really legitimate. Yeah, um, absolutely. Yep, yep. Right. But um, I actually showed my wife a picture of this car while it was still on Craigslist, and it was it was pretty nasty. But uh, she immediately loved it because you, you never see MGs here in the States. And right. I'd never seen one in person. I didn't even realize it was a thing. So when we saw the car on Craigslist, we thought, oh, this will be really cool. Um, I've been looking for something to possibly convert because I was having this, uh, I was having this kind of debate back and forth at the time I was working on a, a Mustang and I've worked on a lot of gas cars. Um, you know, every, everybody loves a V8 to some degree, hmm. but at least here in the States. <laughs> well, um, here, here in Australia as well. So yeah, we have Holden or oh, we used to do anyway, but yeah, we, we right. We, there we, you we, go. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, for sure. It's universal. Right. So I was working on this Ford Mustang. Uh, you know, I had a supercharged V8, really, really nasty machine. And uh, we were arguing with some guys on this Mustang forum. 
and the Tesla comes up and we're talking, oh, well, they don't have enough range. They don't have this. They don't have that. And we were just fighting back and forth about this, these infrastructure changes that we required, all this stuff. And I was looking at the numbers and, you know, it wasn't quite as bad as I had thought at the time. I'm like, well, maybe there's something to it. So I'm looking yeah. around and looking at this kind of stuff and being the kind of um, like to poke around and figure things out. I realized that people are actually making these things. And I couldn't believe it. So, yeah, the, yeah, the, the, that's the thing that people don't realize. This is actually quite a common, well-traveled road now. Um, so when did you do this? When did you actually convert the car, first of all? Yeah, actually, I did it, um, let's see, end of 2017, yeah, early okay. 2018. Nice, nice, yeah. Yeah, yeah. that's when I, um, I, I started it. I picked up the shell, I want to say, in October of 17. Mm. And I had it running and driving, let's see probably in february of 18 okay okay that's so it, it took a few months to get it actually running but i had to put the entire car together and the rest of that and get it a little more reliable and you know yeah of course put a top yeah. on it for the wedding <laughs> yeah of course of course because it was always it's never going to rain on a wedding day right um right uh okay that's, that's so, so yeah, it's obviously at that time when i know some guys you know they did their con they performed the conversions back in like 2011 2012 was really early days but uh, you get to around 2017 ish and there's a, there's actually a reasonable amount of only obviously even now there's a reasonable amount of literature and, and support r resources to get this thing done as well so you must have looked around and gone well yeah this is potentially possible right exactly i was just um I was looking at um, actually the DIY electric car forums very specifically, and I saw that you know one one gentleman had converted a Spitfire and just all these different cars, and um, I didn't get any of the lingo and jargon at the time, but it didn't look that complex. I mean, mm. so I figured I'd give it a shot. Yeah, why not? Why not? Excellent. Yeah. And 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 I guess I love this thing is what you see, what you can't see. The dread in my eyes, the eyes my eyes as the prey. The, the batteries last for another hour of photo. That's awesome. I love that. Um, oh man, they were almost flat at that point. <laughs> yeah, I bet, I bet, I bet. Uh, should we go to the next slide? Yeah, sure. Okay. And that there she is. That's a that's a proper oh. shell. Yeah, yeah. That's that's about all I got. Actually, uh, I got the bumpers as well. Um, it, uh, it it's actually a lot worse than it looks here, but the body was okay. So I figured, well. There's no big rust holes or something. I'm happy to work with this. I hate dealing with rust, but I can I can bolt parts on. I can you know, yeah, put it all yeah. together. That's no big deal. So I actually um, saw it on Craigslist. This is some guy way up in Longmont. It was probably a two and a half hour drive to go get it. Yeah, okay. go with the U-Haul and go with the tow dolly after work and all that jazz. Um, all in, it probably took about eight or nine hours to go get the car. Wow. My poor brother, you know, trudged along with me to get it. And well, yeah. When the uh, when the tire blew out, it, it became more of an ordeal because these tires were from who knows when. It was sitting in a junkyard. This guy had actually pulled it out and decided to sell it. Yeah, One of the okay. things I really like to do is just, I like to put stuff back on the road. So I didn't want to yeah. get something that was, you know, all nice and new and pristine and then hack it apart. I'd rather no. get something that was older, wasn't running anyway, and then make it useful again. Yeah, so yeah. So I chose this. Yeah, I think for a lot of people, it's on it, it's on their bucket list to actually r rescue something, which is what this is obviously what you've done here. I think for sure. Yeah, um, absolutely. I just, I just think it's um, it's, wow. it's cheaper that way. Yeah, no, <laughs> yeah. I, I, and this yeah, okay, this is a mess. Jefferson. Yeah, it was yeah, kind yeah, of a yeah, yeah. Uh, at this point, I'd be telling, if I was a friend, I'd be saying, "Walk away, walk away." Uh, <laughs> <laughs> just like, okay, uh, yeah, all right, uh, yeah, I'm I'm looking for. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Talk us through yeah, it. It, it, it yeah, wasn't yeah, the yeah. best condition, um, but all that stuff. It's mostly interior. You know, it's mostly the kind of the kind of soft stuff. So I figure that's not that bad. Actually, the the uh, interior for this car was one of the easiest things I've done as far as yeah, it's off the shelf most of the time. Yeah, really yeah, 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 yeah. Exactly. And, and look, I just from from here, I can see obviously the floor pan looks pretty good too. It doesn't look too. It's not rusted through from what I can see. Exactly. Yeah, it's in. Uh, it was in great shape, rust-wise. Okay. That's the one thing I didn't want to deal with because that would kind of tank the budget. That was really I. I wanted to build something with great performance, but I didn't want to spend a lot of money on it. So that was kind of driving every decision along the way. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Absolutely right. Um, and there's obviously the junker of the engine, so that's not exactly ideal. It was probably yeah. worth. It was probably did it run at all? It I, it did not run at all. The guy said. Uh, 
you know, he was tempted to throw a starter on it, and if he got it running, price would go up that whole that whole spiel, right? Yeah, yeah, um, yeah, 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 yeah. After I saw it, I'm like, sure, okay, whatever you say, man. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Okay. Interesting. Yeah, the crankcase was filled with a uh, sludge. It, it was done for. It was the uh, 1500 cc motor. So. Yeah. Okay, I, I didn't no. even bother trying to start it at this point. No, no, it's just a waste of time, right? And, and look, yeah. there's a lot of projects start like this in terms of you know you, you get a car and um, actually. Uh, we've got a, a vehicle that's coming to us soon, which is uh, probably means nothing to you, but it's a Ford Transit, which is um, it's like the F one fifty of the UK, and mm -hmm. um, it's a nineteen seventies model, and it needs you know a, tr a transmission, it needs uh, a petrol tank, it needs a radiator, and all this kind of stuff. And you go, well, uh, yeah, let's not even start with that. We'll just go straight to electric. It's just no, there's no point in 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 investing in the in the hardware of the engine or the mechanicals if the ultimate plan is to go electric down the track so yeah exactly, exactly. right why, why bother trying why, why waste an afternoon trying to get started yeah exactly yeah if it's right. close enough then it can be fun to drive for a little bit i really wish i had the experience of driving it as a gas vehicle so i could compare that's yeah. really the only regret there yeah of course yeah um yeah okay so ebay our favorite obviously Great. And then you got a lot of parts off of eBay. Uh, the stuff that's available there, uh, if you're persistent, is kind of crazy. Um, so this motor is actually um, it's a Coast of 11. It's a high voltage version. Excuse me, version. Yeah. Um, it's a little bit different than some of the others in that uh, it has a fan. You can see that fan uh, mounted yep. on to the shaft there, but it also has a cooling fan on the back of it. Um, these motors come with Interpols uh, built in. It's a series wound DC motor with Interpols. Um, nice. It's kind of like a Warp 11 if you're familiar with that one. But yeah. um, basically, it's just a huge series DC motor, which perfectly fit the bill of one being really cheap by comparison, and yep. two having gobs and gobs of power. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. I've actually heard of the Kostovs before, uh, so I've not worked with them before. But yeah, I hear they're they're pretty they're pretty meaty in terms of the power. So and torque. Absolutely. Yeah. The um the motor actually barely fits in the MG, which is funny, but uh, okay. people keep saying, I'll push it all the way back in the transmission tunnel. Like this thing's three times as big as the transmission. So, wow. <laughs> okay. That's, in, that's impressive. Oh, okay. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. That's pretty, that's huge. Oh yeah. It's a gigantic motor, but um, actually I picked it up used. Uh, they said it was never run, but they kind of shipped it in a crate with no packaging and nothing. It was rolling around from Florida to Colorado, from one end of the U.S. all the other, just rolling around in a crate. So pretty beat up when I got it, but put it back together and used it. Okay. No, that's excellent. Uh, and that's bolted right up to the gearbox, I presume, is it? Actually, the MG doesn't use a gearbox at all. It is direct drive from the cost of motor to the... Um, Rear differential straight through a drive shaft. Wow. Okay. It, it, it's got enough torque that it'll it'll drive the MG without any any gear reduction whatsoever, uh, aside from the differential. That's, that's so the uh, deeply impressive, actually. It actually makes the conversion a lot simpler too, which is one of the things I was trying to avoid because I realized a lot of the a lot of the cost and complexity of these conversions are actually wrapped up in adapter plates and couplers um, for, for the transmission. Huge yeah. amount of uh, huge amount of um, money tied up there. Uh, just a single adapter plate can run you, you know, a thousand, two thousand dollars a coupler. And then mm. if you have any issues with alignment, making stuff fit, I realized that was kind of a nightmare for a lot of people. So I want to skip it if possible. Yeah, yeah, uh, yeah. Look, I, I think you've just picked a whole lot of interest, um, including mine, in terms of how this has gone because that's deeply impressive. Because you're right that the, the the adapter plate and all that kind of stuff can be pretty. Uh, pretty expensive to get and you know even you know thousand bucks there thereabouts um and and then all the hassle of getting it all together and um and the clutch and what have you so it, it's it can be uh, and look in one of our projects we've had to rebuild the, the gearbox as well uh before we yeah. can actually even use it we, before we can even use it so there's a whole lot of repairing and restoration before we can actually, actually get going with it so um, and that's another component that you really have to maintain because a, a transmission is not a maintenance-free component. That's actually, there's a lot exactly. going on there. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. Yeah, it's actually deeply impressive, I've got to say. I, and did you talk to anyone before doing this or did, did you do some sums and say, look, it's going to be fine? Because this is a question we get all the time. 
uh, that you know can I just go directly to the differential and um, and uh, we typically say no because the talk the talk isn't there it, it ends up being quite sluggish so uh, you know because the ratios aren't quite you know ratios don't make it right because yeah because they don't so yeah, absolutely. You know, what what research did you do before you did this or did you just bang it in and hope for the best <laughs> a so, little bit second, of both to be perfectly question, frank with you <laughs> <laughs> um part of it is that um the this motor is actually designed for like a, an suv or a truck um i noticed that most people are using a much smaller motor like a warp 9 or mm. maybe um an ac50 ac30 things like that really small maybe nine inch motors yeah um, as a really large 11 inch motor i just figured hey um it's got this much torque and comparing it to the torque of the original gas engine um it actually lined up very well because if you think of the original gas engine having you know maybe 60 foot pounds of torque and the gear reduction in first year and all that this motor actually has more torque yeah. direct drive than the original engine had with gear reduction so i figure hey if i run out of a thousand amps i'm sure it'll work just fine <laughs> wow okay yeah that's that's deeply impressive actually yeah no that's really that's that's really good and it fits so snugly in the in the engine bay as well oh my gosh it was so close i literally had a half inch on each side and as, as i kind of dropped it down in there it was it was a really tight fit in the mg but um yeah. it, it actually did go go right in there that adapter put on the front was um at the time, I wasn't super comfortable welding, so I had a shop do that for me. It's made out of a yeah. three-eighths plate steel. Yeah, okay. basically just has a few tabs on each side and bolts to the face of the motor. Yeah, okay. compare that to like these adapter plates people are using. I mean, it's so much simpler. No alignment, no anything really there. I mean, it's it's accurate, but it didn't need any special alignment. When you're dealing with a transmission, you're talking you know, two thousandths of an inch. Yes. Plus minus, that can destroy your transmission. So yeah. it's just a lot of complexity, a lot of cost, and a lot of risk if you try to do it yourself. And people don't realize that. So yeah, yeah, uh, which, which which is why it's a thousand dollars to get a an adapter plate because someone spent the time machining that and making sure that they're, they're not. It's I don't know what American is for wrought, but um, I'm sure someone will translate. But th that means when <laughs> someone is is uh, they're um, uh, they're they're making money unnecessarily out of something i don't know what you call it in american but anyway yeah a real yeah they're, they're expensive because they're pre they're precision it's it's exactly not just, right uh, it's, they're not, yeah, doing it's not just the, some guy banging this out with a drill press right exactly right exactly right yeah <laughs> yeah yeah cool so that that really simplified the whole thing i just wanted to like i said doing getting the performance on a budget so i had to drop yeah. as much as, as possible yeah perfect really good and you built your own controller yeah, actually, the controller, um, that control board you see there, the green uh, PCB, is actually from Paul Holmes. He does uh, Paul yeah, Serena, yeah, 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 yeah. Electronics. Yeah. So that's his. Um, at the time, it was just being tested. It's his high power DC control board, so it's good for about 340 volts and right. 1300 amps or so. So if I want to take this thing 1300 further, 1300 amps. Good enough. Oh yeah, it's so much power. Okay. Okay. Okay, cool. Uh, yes. And someone's just asking, is that the Revolt project? It is related. It, it's very strongly related, but this is a separate board. Okay, okay. So, yeah. That's, but that's... this one had, um, let's see, it, it plugs into three IGBT half bridges. It has all those pin headers on the top there that you can connect the current sensor, your throttle position sensor, all this stuff to. And then you kind of have to make your own case cut your own uh, plates for the class it's kind of a pain in the butt if i'm gonna be honest with you <laughs> but but i guess it's the same it's it's, it, it's the kind of thing you can do while watching a bit of tv with your wife right uh it's that kind of it's kind of acceptable pastime i would imagine <laughs> right given that <laughs> to probably, agree, yeah yeah I'd, I'd give them that that looks like you're living room park a carpet or whatever um that so, absolutely is yeah <laughs> yeah 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 yes yeah. so, so that's that's kind of that's kind of the good thing the about plate of, was clean yes right. yes exactly exactly so uh, i can't bring a transmission to the living room no 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 exactly well, apparently not my, my wife says it's not possible anyway uh, um so, so so uh, yeah so that's really nice work actually it's really impressive and how long that's that you to, how long did it take oh, you the, to do the that controller was a it was it was a nightmare um because it was a kind of first run board he had never actually tested the software and hardware and everything on this board um we went back and forth for probably two months on 
on uh, details once I'd actually built it to get it fixed. I had to ship it back to him, get it back, all that jazz. But we got it figured out, okay. and it was worth the effort because um, that's that's a controller that do about 500 kilowatts. That's um, that kind of controller would cost maybe two thousand, two and a half thousand dollars, and I built this one for closer to four or five hundred bucks all in. That's incredible. So, this yeah okay we deeply impressive seriously I, already in terms of the the, the what you're doing for in to, to, to cut costs it's just incredible uh, yeah really good yeah this stuff can just be so wildly expensive you know you, you got to mm. cut costs wherever you can and i wanted to you know yeah. i needed the power though that was if i wasn't going to get a fast car i didn't want to build it I mean, yes. coming from a supercharged v8 mustang like you know i, I don't want a slow car no no, <laughs> what's, the, what's, the, what's the point of that, right? Who, who right exactly. That? Yeah, 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 yeah. Exactly. Um, okay. So, so that's the uh, that's the controller actually on the uh, kind of. I was kind of mocking everything up, seeing how it would all fit. I had the motor in at this point, and then just trying to trying to get stuff in the engine bay because these components are actually considerably bigger than I had anticipated, especially the controller. The thing's a monster. It's huge. Mm. Yeah. So uh, a lot of these are a lot smaller, but at this power level, that that gave me a little more cooling because the heat sink of the base is so large so that helped a bit there as well so i figured we'll go for it yeah okay all right really good yeah and yeah, you can kind of see um oh, okay oh, sorry ahead, just one second yeah 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 sorry yeah 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 go yep yeah and the top left we've got the reversing contactor and one thing a lot of people do is they want to go with uh you know the fancy stuff get all the regenerative braking get um all the features but um when, when you're talking to budget maybe, maybe you don't need that you know, if you want to get the power at the price, uh, I was able to get all that with a series DC motor, which was good for this project. But that's the reversing contact there in the upper left. Yeah. I've got my DC DC converter. That's the black box there on the left, controller on the right. And yeah. up in the top middle there, you're going to see my lawn and garden battery. <laughs> so that's the battery for the MG, just for the auxiliary system. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Perfect. And, and look, I, I think you're right, just in general. Um, we get a we get a we get a lot um, with customers ringing us and saying, "Oh, how much for you know to, con to to convert a particular vehicle to electric?" And we and you know the first question is obviously how far do you want to go and how fast do you want to go? And right. um, you know, and and someone this week started off with, "I want to go 700 kilometers in in one trip," and you go, "Well, oh, buddy, <laughs> yeah, okay, well, uh, uh, you know." But, uh, place hand place uh, uh, coins in my uh, in my in my pocket kind of thing and, and um and after a while you after a while you you know when you start talking to the customers about this and say well how far do you really want to go and and it turned out his journey was only 20 k's to work and 20 k's back again so he really needed normally 40 k's of range okay well now we can talk you know it, and and it's yeah, everyone wants the biggest and the best and the most powerful and all that kind of stuff, but sometimes we need to be more realistic about what you really, really need, especially when some of this stuff, like you say, can be really expensive. Um, yeah, especially when you talk about, um, you know, range, range anxiety is a thing. It, it, it really, no, it, really it is. is. It, no, it is, it is, it is, but what, I think what you, you know, uh, people bang on about regen and, and how effective it is and all this kind of stuff, and it, it is good, don't get me wrong, but if it's not the be all and, L, and end all, um, and buying getting a, a system that will, because I presume you don't have regen with this, is that right? That's right. Uh, regen with the series wound motors is really finicky, yeah. and uh, most setups don't have it. That it's really, yeah. really rare. Yeah, yeah. So, so, so it, regen is one of the things you, you've had to, you know, forego kind of thing but but the reality is you you may not get that many benefits from having regen in the first place anyway so um but who cares you've got it for a really good price so right. it yeah. runs and drives like yeah yeah exactly <laughs> exactly 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 um, yeah perfect uh charging the mg okay so, so that's a uh that's the 3.3 kilowatt charger that i got from a, a chinese company it's basically like um Elcon here in the US. I'm sure you guys have some yep, of those chargers. Yep, it's a yep, TC. Yep, yep, yep. Um, so that's the, the charger that I was initially using. Uh, unfortunately, there was actually an issue with the CAN bus communication with that guy. So I only got the MG up to like maybe an 80% charge before the wedding. So I'm just trying um, not to <laughs> have it die while we're out and about for another hour of photos. But um, 
again, just trying to get uh, a reasonably priced charger, but I went with that one. That's one of the mistakes I made some, uh, some of this stuff uh, where I get the parts and uh, parts compatibility. Everybody says, oh yeah, our, our stuff works with that, our stuff works with that. Well, double check and keep your receipts, right? Yeah, so, yeah, ab absolutely, absolutely. Yeah, you may see uh, the pictures in the MG. I don't have that charger anymore, so that was a pretty expensive mistake on my part that, uh, you know, those yeah. mistakes add up really fast. No, that they you do. You dump 500 on a charger and it doesn't work, or doesn't yeah, work quite or, as yeah, anticipated. And, and you can't get your money back, or you diff have difficulty in selling it as well, so that's, that's, a, that's, a, that's an issue too, for sure. Yeah, absolutely. So I went ahead and uh, I have this charger now. This one is, uh, I actually got it. I got it used off eBay as well. I think it was uh, about a hundred bucks. Wow! And I sent it back to uh, Elcon in California to have them uh, reprogram it uh, for my battery pack. Yeah. Uh, they have to program these for a specific voltage range. And, yeah. Uh, it can hold up to ten profiles. You can have multiples um, within that range. Okay. So I can I can, I had a I had them program it for you know like 144 volts and 96 volts and 200 volts, and um, I just use it to charge. It just just uh, runs on a an enable relay. Very very simple. Yeah. It works. Okay. Okay. Oh, that, that sounds. Uh, and, and you just have it switch between the different voltages that you want to charge to. Is that how it works? Or um, what I do is I uh, you basically hold this button down. It's under the sticker there to to set the profile. Yeah. I and got then it. when you uh, when the BMS enables the charger, it's just going to go through the uh, the algorithm. It's going to follow the voltage, constant current, constant voltage. Or excuse me. Um, C C C V whatever. It is. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Whichever yeah, one, yeah. right? <laughs> yeah, yeah, <laughs> so, yeah, yeah. I guess that's, yeah, that's right. Yeah. Just um, fires through automatically. So then, uh, when the BMS says, "Whoa, something's out of line," I'll just turn off the relay. Charge will turn off. Very, very simple. Okay. That's that. That sounds ideal, doesn't it? Just keep it simple, stupid, essentially. That that makes such a difference when you're dealing with this kind of stuff. Keeping it simple. I I, I wanted to add all this stuff, and you know, every single thing you add that. That's money, and especially yeah. when you're doing something that you haven't done before, or you're not familiar with uh, the components. I mean, there was this is a huge learning curve for me. So yeah. um, the simpler you keep it, the more likely you are to get on the road. Yeah, exactly. Like, yeah, and look, um, one of our customers, um, he he bought a charger off his, I think it was last year it was, and um, and uh, he said, oh, like I'm experienced with like, electronic engineering, all this kind of stuff. And I said, that's great, fine, fine. Here's a charger and we sent it off to him. And he said, how do I code it? How do I get it? And I said, well, you need to download Putty. And he said, well, what's Putty? I said, right, <laughs> okay, okay. So, yeah. you know, uh, you, okay, you, you, you may be good at the electro electronics, but um, I think you, you need to do some work on, you know, do some re revision elsewhere to be able to get this things up and standing up. I love some people like that. I think, I guess the message is that it's not just all ball about high voltage electronics or electronics or whatever. There's, there's actually a lot of disciplines required to build a car. And I think what you've done here is smart in terms of, you know, you've outsourced certain components to the experts to do all this. So yeah, so, so you can fast track. So you haven't got to worry about coding it. You just send it to Alcon, they'll do it for you. Get it back and then wire it up and off you go. Yeah, pretty much. Um, some of the stuff I'm doing now in the Mercedes, I've got enough of a background now that I'm comfortable yeah. doing all of that. But at yeah. that point in time, I'm like, why make it more complex? I want to get this thing on the road, and I've got a very limited time frame to do it. Yeah, exactly, so, exactly. Um, so batteries and BMSs, which ones are these? Now these are actually batteries out of a Chevy Volt. Okay. Um, the Chevy Volt battery pack is about 360 volts, I believe. Uh, it has, I think, maybe 11 of these modules in there, thereabouts. But um, each of these guys is 48 volts at okay. uh, 50 amp hours. So I put them all in series, so the battery pack's about uh, 200 volts. Wow. Now I okay. got these um, I got these off of eBay as well used. Uh, kind Excellent. of blew me away that you get batteries on eBay, and they can ship lithium-ion batteries. I mean, they explode, right? But yeah, yeah, I hear that. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> But the, they were able to ship them to my door. I got the batteries for about a thousand dollars. The reason I chose a Chevy Volt specifically was because they had really high um, C rate. The amps you can draw from these batteries is huge. These four modules in series, I literally pull a thousand amps into the uh, motor wow. peak. Wow. Okay. Yeah. Deeply impressive. Yeah. And and, um, and it, you've obviously got them daisy chained with the BMS as well here. Yeah, exactly. That's uh, those are the uh, Ziva units. 
uh, okay. the BMS slaves there. You can see the current sensor. Or maybe you can't. Uh, but the current sensor is off on the right where the char near that charger. Yeah. And it's all just kind of a CAN bus daisy chain all the way to the front of the uh, vehicle where I have a um, their little computer that runs the gauges and the handheld that gives me my display so I can uh, kind of see what the status is of everything. Yeah. So those will just balance out all of the cells and make sure they stay um, yeah, yeah. within a certain range as well as um, monitoring them for turning off the charger, opening the main contact to that kind of stuff. Yeah, so you've got control back to the charger as well, so you can stop the charger from overcharging and all that kind of stuff as well? Exactly. So the it'll monitor every cell, and if anything goes out of line, it will um, shut the charger off. The thing is, the okay. charger is set a little bit below the maximum voltage of the pack. It will tolerate a very slight imbalance, mm. but the, the Ziva units keep it perfectly balanced. So mm. the charger will just run all the way up until it uh, terminates its charge. Shortly thereafter, the Ziva BMS uh, yeah. terminates it as well. Yeah. So it works perfectly. Yeah, no, that's perfect. And how many how many of these cells you got? Is it four? Uh, I got forty eight cells in series. Each of those modules has twelve cells in series, three cells in parallel. Okay. Yeah, no, that's impressive. That's really nice. Yeah. So this is kind of my first foray into welding as well, which was a learning experience. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it is. It's um. I've actually, I've actually not done any welding yet myself. I've got I've, I outsourced that, but I want to get into it for sure. Yeah, people. The, uh, the the hardest part isn't actually the welding itself. I find it's the measuring and cutting beforehand. Yeah, because half of the stuff I made didn't fit, and once I figured that out, then I had to go back redo it, take my time. But then it wasn't too bad. Yeah. So with you, with you says here, Clippy, keep me a classic with mods. So <laughs> did you, did, were you, were you going for a resto mod kind of look for it as well, or? Oh, you were. I wanted to okay. keep it relatively sneaky. Um, I tried a couple of seats, and um, one of the things that you really don't get when uh, when you see an MG online is you don't get the scale. These things are so small. <laughs> mm. uh, the midgets are so tiny. So actually, getting a pair of seats that would fit, I tried a couple out. I got these uh, off of um, I'll shoot eBay again because they were cheap and they looked interesting. They had that kind of retro bucket yeah. style, so I figured I'd give them a try. I ended up replacing them actually with uh, some seats from Mazda Miata. Of course um, you did. Right? <laughs> <Who doesn't? laughs> I, uh, I got them off of Craigslist for free, so throw those in there. Okay, that's excellent. Um, but then uh, as far as the wheels, I had to get I had to get some mini lights and just make it look right, you know? Yeah, 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 yeah. They look, they, the, the mini lights always look good in the midget. They, they just do. They just they yeah, exactly. Like, well, that's, yeah. that's, that's the look that I want. I want it to look the part. But then I want to be able to blow people away. Yeah, of course, of course. Right. So uh, I actually had to rewire the entire car. I took out uh, every harness and rewired everything front to back. Um, hooked it up to a fuse panel, a relay, uh, relay panel, and it was honestly a huge pain in the butt getting the wipers working. Oh, they, really? They do so much with some of that goofy stuff. Each switch has a thousand contacts in it that do everything on the interior. It's just weird. So, so this was a so what was wrong with the wiring to start off with? Was there something wrong with it? Yes. Um, it was, uh, most of it was rotted out. Uh, the car was sitting open to the elements, actually. So uh, basically everything under the hood was trashed. Everything inside the body was trashed. Some of the st stuff in the trunk was okay. But um, it got to the point where it wasn't worth troubleshooting the harness, and it might as well just start from scratch. Uh, and I, think, uh, I think the thing with this as well is if you start with a car that's old, that, that has... You know, and you're doing this much work to it. You want it to be reliable, and it doesn't matter if you, you know, if you've resolved all the issues for, you know, at that moment, you don't want it breaking down on you in the highway, or the wipers not working, or the lights not working because, you know, the the, the wires are frayed or what have you because you haven't, you've been too lazy or <laughs> to uh, right. to swap the swap the cables over. So it's it, exactly like, like we, we've had to do this with a couple of our vehicles as well, and it's it has been a pain. In the butt, there's no doubt about it. But uh, ultimately, we knew we had to do it. You know, in addition to the conversion, because we couldn't send the vehicle out without having all this done already. You know, because it just it, it ruins the experience if the thing is going to be unreliable once it's on the road. Yeah, um, exactly. And that's um, I wanted to use this with my wife. You know, go on dates. We use it all the time for dates and stuff like that. Last yeah. thing I want to do is go out on a date and you know be stuck trying to figure out what that weird wire under the dash is and why it's sparking. 
Yeah, yeah, of course. Yeah, for sure. Yeah, so we just just did it all, rewired it, and just moved on with life, accepted that, and uh, bit the bullet. Yeah, excellent. And, you, and you've got tunes as well, obviously. Right, yeah, it's actually, um, it's a little tiny amplifier board off of Amazon. I think it was like eight bucks, something like that. And um, I took a faceplate and kind of put it through there and wired it up currently into the original um, radio housing. Um, okay. Yeah, so that way it looks like it, it, it's closer to stock, but it's basically just a uh, like an RCA jack and a, a volume knob, and I just hook it up to my phone. So this way I can still have some sound without putting like some gaudy speakers all over the place. Yeah, or something yeah, like that. yeah, without cutting the doors up and all that kind of stuff as well. Yeah, obviously. exactly. Yeah, yeah, perfect. And here you are. So that's a J1772, yeah? Yeah, Excellent. exactly. That was... um. That was one of the things I, I realized is that I was kind of limited on where and when I could charge because I was just, I was using a legitimate like house 110 cord, which was kind of fun. You know, people mm. see like a, a, a an extension you, cord sticking what, out of your car, you, but. Yeah. But 110 is pretty slow, right? It is slow. Yeah. Yeah. We so, have, to, um, we have to, we have 240 here. Yeah, exactly. So that's that's what uh, the new charger does. It'll do the uh, it'll do the 240. It's only 2,500 watts, so I'm not using the full power that's available there. Most of these are doing, you know, five kilowatts per side. So yeah, that's something for the future. But right now, with the 2,500 watt uh, charger, it's it's plenty fast. Yeah, and yeah. This is cool. just after I got the J1772 actually working. I just I had to go take a picture and be like, look. <laughs> yeah, of course. Yeah, why car is plugged into public infrastructure and it's not on fire. Yeah, perfect, perfect. You need to show that. You need to send it off to the news for sure. Look, with, with this is well, this is well, this is this is well. This is another thing. There's um, it, it's a it's a funny thing. Um, I met some guy recently who'd converted his car to electric, and he decided that he wasn't going to do the J1772 thing, you know, for public charging. And his mm -hmm. his logic was that um, if he's got um, uh, uh, and it just had an extension cord which he pulled out. From the, from the back of his car and his logic was you know well, he wanted to be able to charge everywhere but it turned out he couldn't charge anywhere at all because it's you know public charging infrastructure is there for a reason it's, it's dedicated in the right places and all this kind of stuff and people aren't too keen on extension cords running across sidewalks and you know up their stairs into their buildings i mean you know they, they just don't like that no, no, I heard that. I heard that. So, <laughs> so, so, uh, yeah, the, it, it, it's just, you just, with these conversions, you definitely need, like, you know, need to have public charging capability. Otherwise, it's just not, it's just not going to work for you. Um, so, yeah, no, that's, that's definitely the right, the right way to go. Uh, yeah, it's so easy good. enough to Looks add so, now, too. You really it, is, it is, it is. It's, it's a well worn track. Thankfully, there's, it's been, it, whether you go with Orion or Ziva or you go with uh, Thunderstruck, everyone's got a, everyone's got a solution now to make it work. So that's, that's no issue at all. Yeah. yeah. There we go. How good is that? <laughs> <laughs> So um, we, we kind of brought this up a little bit earlier here. My biggest piece of advice is um, really keep it simple and be realistic um, because there's nothing worse than having a project that you've been working on for a while and then possibly having to give it up because you've gone out of your depth, you've run out of budget, whatever it may be. It's always better to have a running, driving, reliable project than to have that really cool project sitting in your garage that you'll finish someday. Yeah, exactly. Unless like, all you want is bragging rights, I've got a Tesla motor. It's it's just better to drive it. I'll take yeah. this over a Tesla motor sitting in my garage any day. Yeah, exactly. And look, I, I think um, you know you've mentioned you know um, Craigslist and eBay. Uh, we've all seen those projects projects where it says you know unfinished unfinished projects for sale. Wife says it's got to go immediately, or those to the words to that effect. And you know uh, we're it's it's interesting. One of our customers, he's he's just bought a kid off us actually, and um, the the car isn't in particularly good condition. But he's ta he's taking the same approach as you actually in terms of look. He knows the car needs to be restored at some point, but he just wants to get it converted and have it as a, a rolling restoration. And he's trying to do it as quickly as he can um, without you know any deviation or hesitation. And then mm -hmm. um, he can do the rest of it down the you know down the track. It's not going to be. Uh, something that he can um, he uh, is going to be sticking around like a bad smell essentially so but yeah, yeah exactly it's, it's it's definitely the right way to go I think anyway uh, and it, look, yeah. it becomes more interesting if you've got a car that that you know uh, is um, if you've got 
if you've got a car which you're driving in almost on a daily basis, then you can make a list and you can chip it away to, at your laser rather than it being a pain and it being an overhead for you as well. So it's, I think that's that's cracking advice. It really is. And it's actually really, it's really difficult on the motivation for a lot of people. Uh, yeah. I almost quit a couple of times because some of the stuff just was not working. But I'm like, I got to finish cool. this. I got to finish it. Whatever I have, to, whatever I got to do, I'm going to finish it. But, you know, some people they'll run into a problem and they, they may not be able to fix it for, you know, five months, six months, nine months. And it's just really complex. It's something unusual. And, you know, you just, it's hard to maintain your motivation when you have something sitting on four jack stands with no motor versus something that you're like, you know, this drives, it works. It's worth the effort, you know? Yeah. And, and, and I think uh, we touched on before as well, the whole idea of outsourcing. So if you've not welded before, you know, you, you whoever, when you, whenever you do these kind of, conversions if it's if it's if it's your first one there'll be there'll be things that you you won't have done before and um that you're you're challenged with and you need to get on and and you need to either learn it pretty quickly and learn it well um or there'll be a fire or you need to outsource, <laughs> or you need to outsource it or buy it off the shelf or whatever it is so i think with the adaptive play i think you did really well there obviously in terms of simplifying it no gearbox straight to the differential but then you've got a local shop to weld it up for you and you know perfect that's that's a really really smart way of doing that and it's i think it's the first time i've seen a successful conversion where you've gone straight to the differential that's that's pretty impressive actually but you don't, yeah, I, I, don't, don't I don't see a lot of people doing it actually no 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 that's that's the uh, deep uh, deeply impressive here we go here's the he's every, what everyone wants to know so that's <laughs> <laughs> so yeah the uh, the range is low right the range is really really low but I, I live in the city i drive around in the city um, for almost all my needs it actually works really really well um, yeah but it was also on a budget and had a very specific goal. My only yeah. goal was for this to be as fast as my supercharged V8. And, and it does okay. It does okay. Um, yeah. So I've got a pretty small battery pack, but it's roughly nine kilowatt hours. Mm. Um, when I'm running the motor at peak power, um, there, there is some sag on the battery pack, obviously, so it doesn't sit all the way up at uh, 200 mm. volts. But um, I'm pulling 1,000 amps, usually sags like maybe uh, you know, 185, 190. Yeah, that's um, pretty good. Though. The amperage drops pretty quickly as uh, your speed increases and kind of comes yeah, back up. Yeah, 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 yeah. Um, no, that's that's pretty impressive. And look, I, I've saw, I have seen other conversions around that kind of level as well, where it's not really necessary to go more than that. It's you know, and it, again, it comes back to what I was saying before in terms of be realistic about your range. You know, you've obviously got a battery pack, which I think you said cost a thousand bucks or thereabouts. You know, mm -hmm. I'm a, I'm a, I mean. Some battery packs, you know, they start at fifteen thousand dollars, you know, because you're talking, you know, uh, and that's that's you know, it's a lot of money to it's, it represents most of the bill, you know, most of the cost of the bill. So, yeah, it's not people don't it's, realize the battery pack is actually almost it's the lion's share of your cost there. And if you say you want to go three hundred three hundred miles or whatever it may be, well, you're gonna pay for it, and that's yeah, gonna, gonna yeah, your whole budget. Yeah, exactly. And, 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 and again, we keep saying on these things, you've got to be realistic about how far you really go and how, you know, uh, what, what your, what's your expectations and your, your requirements when it comes to this kind of stuff. Uh, absolutely. Yeah. yeah. Okay. That's, I'm just going reading this and that's pretty impressive actually. Yeah. Yeah. Look, um, yeah. So look, I kind of did, um, I did a post on my uh, website about, budgeting for your your conversion making a realistic budget so i, I kind of did a, a bit of a breakdown at the mg uh, plus a few like new costs i didn't i didn't spend uh you know 450 on my alcon charger but that tc charger that was a flub i did so i gotta gotta mm. take that in consideration but um all things considered it wasn't that bad but you gotta have realistic expectations put realistic prices on everything and see what are you actually going to be in for it are you willing to do that and um do you have the skills where you need to farm some stuff out? Because everything you farm out, that adds that adds cost. That's what you see where I have the motor mounting plate. You know, I, I couldn't weld that 3 8 plate steel. You know, my MIG welder won't even do that. No. So for no, safety's no. sake, I don't want to drop my motor on the highway, my goodness. <laughs> no, who? No, no, absolutely not. So, uh, but I, I think what you've got here, I mean, obviously this is all US dollars, so it's a bit, right. you know, we've basically got to double it because for our Aussie dollar. But... Oof. um. Yeah, I know, I know. Uh, 
Corona. Uh, and um, oh, yeah. so it, it's actually, but nevertheless, it, it, you know, it's, a, it, it, you've done, a, you've got, you've done really well here for sure. Uh, this is the most budget, budget build I've seen in a long time. Um, very, very impressive indeed. Yeah. And one thing that uh, helped actually was also just staying within a, an ecosystem for some of that stuff. And the Mercedes yes. here, I'm using all Thunderstruck stuff and the MGM using all the Ziva stuff. Um, it plays nice together and it ends up being cheaper because you're not trying to fix troubleshooting band-aid goofy incompatibilities for things that no one's ever tried. Yeah. That, yeah. That's not, that's not fun. <laughs> no, no, I, I look, uh, w w you know, that's, that's a really good, another really good tip as well. Um, it, it's, it, it's, in, you know, it's important. It, it, well, it helps not important but it, it really helps if you if you're staying within thunderstruck so thunderstruck bms thunderstruck charger so on and so forth then it becomes a lot easier for all the camber stuff to work and the signaling to work and just becomes standard if there's an issue then you can talk to thunderstruck and they'll give you a hand and say well actually you need to put this variable in or make this change and it will be it'll all be just fine um so yeah uh that's that's a really nice looking car by the way i do like that oh, thanks yeah it's yeah, a yeah. uh it's a 69 uh, mercedes 220 so yeah. that's the uh the new vehicle i'm working on right now actually i've got it running and driving now um, oh really it actually works really well yeah it's got a uh got the battery pack out of a mitsubishi imev it's got uh, the motor out of a nissan leaf uh, okay. i actually use a transmission on this one yeah because the, uh, the ac motor is much small much smaller motor and a much bigger vehicle yeah, yeah, it's not yeah. much smaller, but you know, it's, it's yeah. more limited in power than the uh, the big series motor is. So I had yeah. to use a transmission on this one. Yeah, yeah, it's actually yeah, it's one of my favorite cars. Actually, the, the Mercedes. It's a one one four. Is it? Is that what it is? Uh one fifteen. One fifteen. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, 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 yeah. Mm -hmm. I, I used to own a one two three. So yeah, I know them pretty well. Oh, very cool. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. This looks this looks really smart. Actually, very very good indeed. Um, is that do you manage to get that local, or do you have to go for an eight hour? <laughs> yeah, I was actually it was sitting down um, by my brother's house. One of his neighbors had that car sitting there, and we saw it one day. I'm like, man, that's that's a nice looking car. We like that. That's in great shape. What is it? And uh, you know, then we kind of moved on with life. And he uh, texted me nine months later. Or something like, hey, this car is a for sale sign on. You should come check it out. So I do. Turns out it's got a blown motor at this point. So I'm like, perfect. I'll take it off your perfect. hands for five hundred bucks. Yeah, perfect. Excellent. No, that's going to work out very well for you, I'm sure, because it's a cool car, and if you put electric motor in it, you 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 can't go wrong. That's going to be and you and you again, it it meets the requirements of actually, you know, rescuing something as well, which is which is great. Yeah, I don't think I've well, shoot, I've never owned a brand new car. <laughs> no, no, but I mean, as, as far as all this stuff, it just uh, it's more in a way, it's more economical to build your own. Yeah, especially with the price of automobiles right now. Yeah, exactly right. Exactly right. Um, that's what, that was awesome. Thank you. Thank you so much indeed. Um, so what we'll do, we answer some of the questions on the way through, but what sure. we'll do is, so let's have a look. So I, I guess there's a couple of questions here around the, the, obviously i knew this was going to happen the the gearbox uh in terms of you know obviously you removed it there's no first or second gears obviously and you've obviously got a reverse on a on a switch um how does it drive is it is it pretty quick you know is it still is it... <laughs> yeah um it, it's extremely fast off the line um it, it surprises everybody. Uh, you can do burnouts at will, all that stuff. It is a, it's a very fast car, actually. It's not, yeah. It would take the Mustang up to maybe 30 miles an hour after that. You know, the ice with the supercharger kind of takes off at the top end, but it, off the line, it's unbelievable. It's it's quick. Yeah, and what kind of top speed do you get out of it? Because that's the other thing, if you're using those kind of gearings. Right. The um, Theoretically, the top speed is about 99.3 miles an hour. Um, I've taken it up to 80 in a car that size on the highway here in the U.S. with everybody driving their semis and F-150s and Cadillacs. You know, I don't want to die, but it's it's plenty quick and it's got a the top speed. I've never hit the top speed, put it that way. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Cool. Um, like same with the Land Rover, we do the, the theoretically they can do you know 110, 120 k's an hour, probably more, but mm -hmm. um, 
I think it, when you get to about 80, 90 k, it's kind of quick enough for something that's based on 1950s technology. Yes, um, it's plenty fast. <laughs> yeah, no, no, it is. It is. It's, it's, um, uh, yeah, it's not, it's not yeah, be, beyond that. And apology is the only one who's got a Land Rover, you know, beyond that, it's, it's not in, exactly confidence in, inspiring. So yeah, look, I, yeah. I think, I think 80 miles an hour in a midget is perfect. Yeah, and people don't talk about the energy consumption at that level as well. You're using over four times the consump four times the energy at that level that you are at 35. Yes. Uh, you know that, that tanks your range unnecessarily. So I, yeah, I don't absolutely. feel the need to go 80 uh, either for safety's sake or you know just to stretch my range. Yeah, 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 exactly. Uh, and just on that, Andrew Percy just asked a question: How is this low speed? Is it jittery or smooth? Oh, it's extremely smooth. Extremely smooth. Um, immediately off the line, if you suddenly let off of the throttle you'll get a little bit of jittering as it's it, it kind of um you've got all that energy accelerating and suddenly it instantly stops that can yeah. feel a little jarring if you just let off the throttle but it is perfectly smooth zero yeah, to okay. zero to 80. and um, would you recommend using that controller again i mean obviously it's it's you had some issues but i presume that um it's you know you've um uh, yeah, it, it, it's it's in it's it evolved since then and, and been enhanced as, as you've gone through too yeah i mean it it works it works really really well if you're looking for this kind of power level on this kind of budget i really don't think you're going to be able to get it with a um an ac system to begin with yes. and even worse i don't think you're going to be able to get it with a um uh, an out of the box controller from somebody uh, mm -hmm. a controller at this power level usually runs two and a half grand so yeah. That means that his, his control board does work really, really well. And I gather he's making improvements, you know, he added a USB connection, things like that. So, yeah, I, I would absolutely recommend this if you're looking for uh, the cheapest, most powerful solution. And, and in terms of build, was it down to the board level components you had to you had to make? Is that what you had to do? You had to mount all the components on there? Actually, the nice thing here is that um, he can send you the board fully populated, already has all the components on there, mm. and um, already has the software on there as well. I've, I had to reprogram mine a few times um, mm. just because we were, we were working through some bugs and stuff like that. But that's all finished up, and um, you can get the populated board. You just have to build the controller around it. That's, you just got to take your time and, and put it together, and it works great. Okay. That sounds fascinating, actually. I'm, I reckon there'll be some people who'd be interested in doing, doing that themselves for sure. Mm. Uh, just have a look. Do you have issues with overcharging individual cells during the charge because your BMS can't limit the charge current. Right. Um, actually, the cells are very, very well balanced, and the Ziva slaves keep them almost perfectly balanced. Um, so I do not run into any issues with any of the cells going over. The BMS yeah. can't limit charge current um, without the CAN bus connection, but uh, it will disable the charger if anything goes out of bounds. So yeah. with the maximum voltage set on the charger, plus everything being perfectly balanced, uh, I never run into any issues with the premature charge. Yeah, and, and, and look, that's what we did with the Audi as well. This this is the first one I, con I converted about four years ago, it was. And mm -hmm. basically, we uh, bottom balanced all the cells. So really, the, the BMS never really has to do a great deal because it's in balance pretty much the whole time, irrespective of where it's at, if you know what I mean. So um, Exactly. As long yeah, as the batteries are in decent shape, um, almost any BMS will, will keep them really, really close. Yeah. The, the, yeah. Even a dumb charger can do pretty well as long as you have that safety of the BMS monitoring it. Yeah, correct, correct. Um, so Mark Buckingham is asking about the controller and the charge of the Merc. So I knew this was going to happen too. It's it's a pretty cool <laughs> car, right? So uh, yeah. I, I think you need to elaborate a bit more on, on obviously you, you're using IMEF cells. So that's, you, have you got the full pack in there? 16 um, I had around. the full pack. This one was much, much more complex than the MG and I ran into a lot of issues. Um, so it actually ended up sitting for a while while I was, one, kind of getting the gumption back up to work on it again, and two, troubleshooting. Um, so some of the cells actually failed. It looked like the DC-DC converter was back, uh, kind of uh, uh, draining some of the cells. So I lost eight cells there. Oh, wow. So that's unfortunate. But I've still got 80 of these... Uh, 50 amp hour cells in there. So it's an 80, uh, 80 series, uh, on parallel, I guess, battery pack. Yeah. Using yeah. The, uh, the motor out of a Nissan Leaf with the OEM inverter. I'm using a VCU from Thunderstruck Motors to actually control it. 
easiest thing you can possibly do. So easy. Really? So well. Yeah, it controls okay. it directly over a CAN bus. So I got the original uh, loom to connect up to the inverter, hooked those wires up to the VCU, basically, uh, kind of yep. spliced them together. And then you get your throttle in, puts all that jazz in the VCU, and it takes it from there just with pure CAN bus. It works really well. Yeah, I've actually heard of their, their systems are pretty good too. So yeah, um, that's really interesting to hear. So yeah. Yeah, when you're talking a price point and a reliability thing, it, it, may, it keeps all of the uh, OEM limitations in place and it keeps everything safe. That was one of the issues I had is I used a drop-in, or I used one of those drop-in uh, controller boards for the Nissan Leaf Inverter. I replaced the OEM control mm. board. And what ended up happening is I, I misconfigured uh, one of the... Um, parameters and I set my regen I meant to set it to like like 400 amps or something like that but I accidentally set it up to 400 amps per phase right so I dumped 1200 amps through the inverter and blew it on the very first drive nice and that was kind of back to square when I had to rebuild everything so wow yeah okay that's an expensive mistake right extremely expensive mistake <laughs> <laughs> yeah that, that was actually really really frustrating but I've got it all running and driving now um, yeah. I've got the uh, Nissan Leaf motor made it up to a 4 to 3.03. It's a, it's an old 60s three-speed transmission um, that I had lying around from the Mustang. So I um, I found somebody that had made an adapter plate for their yeah. Suzuki Samurai. And I actually nice. uh, got the model from him. I traced the model and made a new adapter plate that'll, that would made up the uh, um, Nissan Leaf motor to one of those Canada EV adapter plates. So I drew, wow. drew that up, sent it off to be milled. I figured, you know, if, I, if I'm going to do this stuff, I'm going to have to learn some CAD. So I did that, made the adapter plate, and that's actually in the uh, Mercedes right now. I got an improved one. I've got the, all, all this stuff is actually on my site right now as well. Okay. So if people want more information about this or even the CAD models, I've, I've got all that stuff up there if people want to use it. Yeah, no, that's that's deeply impressive. And that's what we like about this community. People are prepared to share and, and make things better, enhance it and all that kind of stuff, which is just which is just awesome. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah deep, deeply impressive. Uh, and uh, Emma's just put jeffsprojects.com. So you, uh, be sure to head to that, guys, after this and and have a look and, and troll his web page, just like Mark Buckingham apparently is doing right now, apparently. <laughs> so, <laughs> no, that's great. Uh, look, I, I think, that's it, Jess. I think there's no more questions coming through. So that's that's also really impressive, Jefferson. Really impressed with what you've done there. Um, really great outcome, and obviously uh, 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 the fact that you've managed to keep it to a budget is just deeply impressive too. So um, yeah, look, there's not many can actually do this, and we get asked all the time, you know, how much is it going to cost? Can I do it for five dollars or less? Well, obviously the answer is no, but <laughs> but but yeah, it is possible to do. It, we know, uh, in, in, you know, economically, um, if you're prepared to, you know, do the hard yards, which is obviously what you've done on this, and be ingenious as well. I think it's part of the fun. I think um, we get asked all the time, are we going to do kits for these cars or that car or whatever? But you know, I think part of the enjoyment is working out for yourself and and you know and i think that's what you've what you've done here well obviously you've enjoyed it's quite obvious you've enjoyed doing it all the way through as well which is which is fabulous it's not just getting the car running in and at the end of the day it's actually enjoying it and learning as you go as well which is which is fabulous too yeah absolutely yeah cool the whole the whole process has been a great experience just yeah like, exposing yourself to all these different technologies it's just it's a great learning experience and you'll be amazed at how how fast you pick stuff up just so yeah, uh, and look, I, I don't like talking about it, but um, before I converted the Audi, I didn't know how to fit a clutch, and um, I, it, I, I, and um, it's simple. I, I knew what I was doing in terms of batteries and all that kind of stuff, but I never got involved in the mechanical stuff. And this one day, I went to the Audi, and of course, part of the thing is you part of the process you got to fit a clutch. And I didn't know how to do, it, and eventually worked it out and the sense of achievement just doing that was extraordinary yep. so you just say i can i can fit a clutch now which is fantastic so uh yeah really really impressive um well, sorry i rephrase that it's it's really rewarding when you can get to learn stuff and, and obviously create have something to show for at the end of the day as well absolutely yeah Great so stuff. totally worth it Excellent. All right. Look, thanks, Jeff. And thank, thanks very much for your time. Really appreciate that. Uh, guys and girls, they'll, we've obviously recorded this um, live stream. So it will be available tomorrow morning. Uh, and we'll send out links on all the usual um, 
uh, social channels, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Uh, if you'd like to make contact with with Jefferson, then hit, head to the links uh, on the page right now, jeffsprojects.com, uh, and the Facebook Jeff at Jeff EV Projects, uh, and I'm sure he'll be able to. Uh, answer any questions that you have. Also, he's got a really awesome YouTube channel and there's a particular video which uh, shows him doing a burnout in an MG Midget. Uh, <laughs> so, so that's well worth having a look at as well. Um, so yeah, I'll, I'll, what I might do is, I'm not sure if there's a, if there's a, I can't send a link, but yeah, have, have a look at that. As it's, pretty, it's pretty impressive. All right. Look, thanks, Jefferson. Once again, I really appreciate your time. Thanks for getting up at three o'clock in the morning. We all appreciate yeah. it. I think we've all learned something today as well, which is which is awesome, which is all what it's all about, obviously, too. So many absolutely. thanks. Thanks again. for having me on. It's been fun. No, absolutely. Thank you very much indeed. Talk to you soon. Mm -hmm. Bye. Yep. Bye. Bye.